raised earlier on as to whether there's an ideological shift. We are now putting the blame squarely on communities around issues of xenophobia. And the answer is uh, no. The issue is, what is it that we need to do, all of us together, as led by our branches, being the leader of society, which we need to do to understand what the nature of these crimes are. I think that, that for us is the issue. If we say South Africans are xenophobic, we don't believe that South Africans are xenophobic. Sometimes there is something which sparks unrest in a particular area, and then the tendency then is for the communities to direct their anger at those who are foreign, who are in their um, in their in their areas. Take for instance uh, what we've seen um, in in Deben last year, and what we've seen in some of our township. It's like in a I always say it's like in a family when you you have issues, all of you. You the immediate is to vent out your anger towards the weakest. Who's the weakest here? And the weakest is this one, and that's who I'm going to vent my anger on. And I think even in this case, it so happens that in our communities, you do have people, some of whom are running shops, etc., etc. And even if sometimes people were not dealing with those issues of uh, who's running a spaza shop way, something, a small thing happens, maybe a protest uh, action for service delivery. And then one, two, three, it is directed at the nearest person, and the weakest in this instance is a person who is a foreigner. We do not believe that South Africans are xenophobic, particularly because the very South Africans, they are intermarriages now, interrelationships with people who are foreign. Not only that, South Africans are fully cognizant of where we come from, and it's something which we should never ever forget as a society that there was a time when South Africa was a country which did not uh, embrace everybody in terms of uh, the economy of the country, in terms of also even the eco social economic benefits in our society, a time when there was discrimination against the majority of South Africans. And South Africans know that in order for us to win that struggle against apartheid, we, we received solidarity support from other countries around the globe. Not only that, that you do have people who had to leave the country, whilst others were in prison and others were, 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 were fighting internally. Here. You have people who had to leave the country and live in other countries in the world in order for them to, to perform that struggle, to conduct that struggle from those countries. So we're not a, a, a xenophobic country. And even when you talk to South Africans, actually ordinary people in the streets, they do not say, look, we hate. Sometimes there's something which just sparks. So, and unfortunately, and unfortunately, we do have people who are what we call people who are who who intentionally whip people's emotions in our communities. Agent, agent provocateurs, we used to call them, who are always there to make sure that there is tension, either between communities and government or amongst or our people themselves. You do have those kinds of people who just like to see, who don't want to see stability. And what is important is for communities to identify such people so that, one, they are talked to, we engage with them, and you understand uh, the origins of this anger. The other matter which I would have wanted us to, to, to further elaborate on is this crime against women and children. I think that we should not, uh, because we feel we are under siege, there shouldn't be a siege mentality. Two, we should not feel like it is because nothing has been done in terms of legislation. There's all the legislation in South Africa which provides for the protection of women and children. 
not only that, we've had programs which talk to that particular issue, and we also believe that the reason why many women are coming forward, it is precisely because South African women know their rights. South African women are well empowered and understand that it is the responsibility of the state to protect them. <coughs> However, what we should be worried about, all of us, should be concerned about is the gruesome nature of the crimes which are being committed. We've had uh, many, many cases of violence against women. At some point in time, they were, you would have easily thought that there are no cases of violence in women, okay, there are few. But it is because women were not coming forward. But because of the campaigns launched by NGOs together with the government to say, speak out, come forward, report to the police, we saw a rise of reported case of violence against women in South Africa. However, we've not seen this sort of thing. And, and it's something which we need to engage on as South Africans. What is happening here? Is it the, well, there's a doctor here, so I don't want to use terminology. I, I don't understand Dr. Golube, but is it the psycho makeup, the psych? of South Africans? It is not. But we should be looking at post-1994, when we acquired our democracy. What programs did we put in place to assist our people to deal with issues of anger? Well, sometimes, if you, if you just an ordinary uh, a, a protest match turns into a violent uh, activity, just a protest match. And in the process, women, Children, young men are caught up in that violence. When there was no necessity for people to express their frustration in an angry manner. So, if you say to me, we've become a violent society, yes, we have. Not because there's nothing which has been put in place by through legislation by our parliament? No, there is. In fact, I'm glad that the minister, Comrade uh, Masuta, went on to elaborate on some of the cases he has to deal with of people who are applying for, lifers who are applying for parole. It's murders, it's attempted murders, it's violent acts against other people, and in particular, the weakest women and children because it's something which has always been there and we should worry about it. But our programs have succeeded in so far as allowing women to step forward and report. Where we've not won, which is a very new phenomenon, is how these murders are now committed. <coughs> if a person, a young man, is going to rape a woman, kill her, and then burn her to ashes beyond recognition, there must be something wrong with that. There must be something wrong with that. If a man is going to rape a three, four-year-old girl, baby, and kill him, then there's something wrong with that. So we should be talking about South Africans. Are we an angry nation? Are we an angry? And if, because this thing is not, by the way, it's not a racial thing. This violence against women cuts across all races. And not only all races, all sectors of our society, including class. It's not a phenomenon which, which is there, which is prevalent in areas where there are poor communities. Behind our high walls, our high walls where we live, in our suburbs, you find violence. You find women who are abused every day. The issue is, how does this abuse manifest itself? And some of us have been talking about this and saying, it starts with emotional abuse. And slowly, it turns into physical abuse. And of course, now we are ending up with these sort of cases where women are murdered in, in a manner which is very cynical. You know, I think that some of the people who are doing some of the things must be, in fact, we were saying at the Peace and Stability meeting, we need to, to get people to do a research. 
beyond just doing a research on crimes against women, domestic violence, just look at why, why this in this way, why, why this anger and bitterness, why murder a woman in such a in such a callous manner. That's what.